here so happy uh, and very excited that you decided to join my adventure, um, which is titled Breaking the Norm with Creative, and this is a surprise, CSS. Yay! <laughs> Thank you! <laughs> Woo! Um, okay, so I have to share my story. Um, one day I got a task, create a website. Well, I did this for a living, easy, right? But actually, I was stuck. Like, I, I was lacking creative powers. I didn't know what to do. It was a huge blocker. So yeah, I literally was lying on my desk and I was like, what should I do? So I decided just to take a deep breath and just look on the website that I visit daily. It was PayPal, it was Evernote section. Um, they, all together, they looked like this. You have to admit that they're quite boring. And my friend, uh, she wanted to be funny. She sent me this link. I was like, yeah, it is quite, yeah, it is quite funny, but actually it's a dramatic time for me. Like, should I change my profession? Because I, I totally lack inspiration. Like, is it the burnout? Um, and I was analyzing the situation and I was asking like, are we living in the era of 12 columns? and three boxes, like, do we know any other numbers or shapes? So I was wondering, like, is it only me uh, who, who has this uh, impression? Or maybe the whole World Wide Web has fallen into a boring state? And fun fact was that I also stumbled upon this article, uh, which is from 2015, but I still think that it's very current. Web design is completely boring, and it's like, Yikes, like what, what I should do to change it? So, okay, I decided to take the, the online detox. And currently I'm reading Cole, uh, Cole, Newport's, uh, yeah, Cole Newport's book uh, called Deep Work, and he states that it's very important for your mental health and for your ideas and concentration to stay offline. So, yeah, hopefully this is the remedy. <laughs> So I just switched off the computer, forget about uh, Behance, Dribble, sorry Dan. <laughs> um, but yeah, I decided to look for the inspiration offline. So the things that were, were closest at my hand were old fashioned magazines I got from my friend. And actually it was it. So although print medium is regarded as that, I, I really found really interesting ideas, design ideas that I really wanted to bring to the web. So as you can see, like, the layouts is different, the, the artwork, so everything is carefully assembled to support the content. And I thought that, yeah, this is something what we really have to do for the web. And when I was slowly getting back to the online world, I stumbled upon brutalist websites. Who has ever heard about them? Okay, so, so some people. So, in my definition, brutalist websites are websites that are kind of like a web non-conformist. They forget about all the existing rules, um, which is sometimes annoying in terms of the user experience, but at the same time, it's extremely unique, and it's something what we really, um, really need on the web, something weird, something crazy. And if you think that brutalist websites are great for artists, for portfolios, for photographers, I can prove that you're wrong, because Bloomberg started to use very uh, bold ideas, and this is a really great article. Um, and I love that they're having some GIFs that look like, they look like from 2000 word art, or, and the colors are very vibrant. Um, I think that's really unique, and this is a serious article. Okay, so now you're thinking, okay, uh, you're talking a lot about design and print, but where is CSS? This is dot .css conference. So the good news is that I'm heading to this part. Um, after all my ideas and inspirations, um, I decided to visit Pinterest and look for some um, other images that I can gather. And I really wanted to do the CSS challenge and to like find out what I can do with the code. And my, my like, uh, really important point was that I wanted to keep it simple, because I really believe that CSS can bridge the gap between designers and developers, and designers like simple things, uh, especially when they are beginners in terms of code. So I was trying to use the most simple code I can. 
And the first thing that was pretty cool for me was clipping. So clipping is just, clip path is just the shape's boundary. And if I have to define it to designers, like explain what is that, for me it's just like using scissors and paper and chopping. So everything that is inside the shape is visible and everything that's outside is just hidden. So you might be familiar with it, um, that we can use different options for clip path. We can create rectangles, circles, and more sophisticated shapes with polygon. Uh, but I really uh, like the URL function because actually we can apply um, shapes created in SVG. So I created a, a simple example um, where we have the container and the background and everything is clipped. This is the, the, the splashy shape. Um, and this is very simple because you just um, have the shape defined in SVG. You can just draw it in Illustrator, copy and paste it directly in the add code editor. Um, you put it in between the dev stacks because this is the definition in SVG. And later you just reference to it um, in CSS. And I was also looking for uh, different ways for clipping, how we can uh, apply them. Uh, and I, I thought that maybe we can just cut out some elements of the image, what we usually do um, in Photoshop, for instance, and save the image later uh, with transparency, so in PNG format. So this is the example I created. I was really inspired by, uh, by collage technique. And what you can see here is that the, the, the clip path is applied. So if I come in it up, the full image is shown. So what you have to do? Um, well, you have to prepare the shape on your own. Um, so you're starting thinking, well, is it better uh, maybe to create the, this PNG file? But the answer actually is the file size. Uh, the PNG with transparency weighs six times more than JPEG with applied clip path. And frankly speaking, I don't know whether this is the future for clipping out the images, um, but I do believe that this is a great method for experiments. And uh, if you would like to find out more about different approach, you can also check out Chris Coyer's article on CSS tricks. Another great CSS feature uh, that was super cool for me was masking. So masking is a bit different uh, from clipping because um, it, it defines uh, how the, the pixels will be transparent. So the mask is composited with the image and uh, it, it defines uh, how transparent the pixels will be. So there are, again, different methods we can apply it. We can use raster images with transparencies, we can use gradient, um, but again, we can use URL function. And what I particularly love about masking is that we can apply the same properties just as for background. So we can repeat the background, the mask, we can define its size. Um, so it's just a great tool to create interesting effects. And for masking, uh, I prepared a pretty simple example. And this is also the, um, the example that shows that CSS can also support storytelling because um, it gives us some emotions, what, like what the article will be about. So I can imagine that um, this kind of effect would be applied in National Geographic's article or uh, anything that is connected with adventures. And what I do here is just I um, have this whole container as a heading, um, H1, and the mask, mask is applied. Um, if we want to check what the masks, how the mask looks like, this is it. So the, the, the red background is the area that our, um, our heading is shown. So everything what's gray or white, I don't know about the, the contrast. Um, it's actually hidden because this is the transparent area. So the last thing that it's done is that this pan is fixed. So we have this effect of the, the layers. And another thing 
really cool about masking is this transparency uh, levels. And this is the GIF file where I applied a simple mask. And that's it. So we can have really, really interesting effect without um, spending a lot of time. And I think that this is something that you can show to the designers to, to prove them that CSS is a, is a great way for prototyping. OK, so now uh, I owe you um, the definition, like uh, explaining you what is the difference between clipping and masking. So if you would like to go for a crisp display, um, the vectors, it's definitely um, better to go with clipping. And for masking, um, it's wise if you would like to have this, this, this change of the, of the transparency levels. Just remember that masking is more memory and, uh, and computation consuming be because it goes pixel by pixel. And the last thing I want to mention is shape outside. Uh, so who said that we need to be, like our web design needs to be boxy. So let's s step outside of the box literally and let's apply different shapes. So shape outside uh, defines how the content should be wrapping around the floated element. Of course, we can, uh, we, we can apply similar uh, values just like for masking and clipping. So we can, we can have circle, we can have polygon for more sophisticated shapes, uh, but also there is a URL function. And this is the example I prepared. Uh, so we can see that uh, the text around Q letter um, just perfectly like, um, wraps, around, wraps around this shape. And uh, here is the one trick. Uh, because shape outside doesn't change anything about the, the, the floated element itself. So the background stays as it is. So if we want to have it clipped, we have to apply either clip, uh, either clip path or masking. And the uh, important thing is that the, the floated element has to um, have defined either height or, or width to have the coordinate system set. And the uh, last thing I want to mention is my, my beloved strand, um, Chaos. Um, it's, it's really connected with Brutalis website and errors like jamming everything that's connected with some, that something is wrong is actually very welcome these days in terms of web design. And I really do believe that with, with SVG, yeah, Sarah mentioned filters. Um, Mandy, she was talking about variable fonts. With the simple CSS tricks like clipping and masking, we can do uh, a totally new app. And I really believe that this is in our hand. And I just have to show you uh, the, the very last uh, inspiration. This is the, the website I just like stumbled upon somewhere. And I love the fact that although it's very simple, they apply uh, the, the change of the perspective and this, the text is cute. And I love the fact that this is the website that belongs to architects. And I was wondering, OK, how we can do this? Actually, it's pure CSS. Uh, this is Copen uh, made by James Bosworth. So later, after my talk, I will, I will tweet the link so you can check out the details. So I do really believe that the web should be more crazy. And I know that sometimes it's very hard to encourage clients to do brutalist website. Uh, but we do have some side projects we can try. Uh, and, uh, you know, this is in our hands. So whenever I travel somewhere, I try to find inspiration for web design. And um, I was visiting Amsterdam and went to Stedelijk Museum. And you can just look at the website, just amazing. This is the official museum, and they have brutalist website. And the same for Strielka, Strielka Institute. Um, I was in Moscow, and I visited this institute and went to their website, and I suddenly fell in love with it. I think it's amazing. And the last thing I want to mention is that when I was um, passing, when I was going uh, to the metro today, um, I just 
by accident saw this. And I think it's amazing, it's just like a basketball court. I don't know whether you live in France, but if you do and you have time, you should go there. It's amazing, it's totally Instagrammable place. I love the colors, the gradients, everything. I, I think that um, they, they, they're kind of like a brutalist basketball court. And I know that it's, it's hard to take the risk, but uh, Henri Matisse, um, he said that creativity takes courage. So we have to take this courage and we have to experiment. And if you'd like to get some stickers, I do have the awesome stickers with me, so just come and say hi. And the last thing I want to do, my mom asked me for a picture. Can I take a picture of you? Although it's very dark, but I promised her to, take, to, to, to send her a picture. So it, it would be pretty, <laughs> pretty big picture. But I have a better, better idea. I'll do the video. Could you wave? Yay! Okay, perfect. Thank you. I'll be posting it uh, on my Instagram. Uh, it's called The Awesomes. And my Twitter is Agana Ploha. Uh, if you find any cool brutalist website or places in Paris, just post it. Uh, I'm looking for some inspirations. And merci.